Hey guys, welcome back to another video. My name is Callum and I'm a software tester. Today we're going to be going through some basic introduction to software testing, uh, specifically around UI. And I hope these, this is going to be probably one video of a few that's just aimed to give you an introduction into the world of quality assurance and software testing and just ease you in bit by bit. Uh, this first video is going to be on UI testing and also I just wanted to say thank you so much um, because since my last video it's been about four months and I'm sorry guys that I haven't put another video out there but since my last video uh, I had about 20 or so subscribers and that is now going to I think around 83 or 84 now so for each and every one of you that subscribed thank you so so much i really do appreciate it and how have you found my channel um i'm just glad you're here and also i just want to say lastly before we dive into the video sorry about the mic quality um did plan to try and use my boom mic but i'm having to use my webcam mic just for various technical reasons of course but without further ado let's get straight into the video now, the very important thing with this software, and the reason why I wanted to do this with a webcam as well, not just to have my face shown to you guys, but also the screen, because as you can see, as I hold my hand up, a cursor is displayed on the screen. Um, and by moving my hand over the screen, if you like, by positioning, the cursor obviously follows. Now, how this is done, I'll quickly show you, is if I just point my webcam down, I've got a little camera down here, an infrared camera that's just simply... Well, not simply, I don't want to start throwing words out there, but the camera is tracking my hand, you know, through various layers, is then able to produce a cursor on screen. If we go over to the UltraLeak widgets here, and we're going to commence our software testing, I'm just going to walk you through manual testing for the UI, and hopefully this will give you some pointers and stuff to think and look out for when approaching software testing. So you can see as we double click the application, it's opened up. That's great. That is like the first step. That's essentially a good first step to make sure. Um, one of your test cases should always be just opening up the application and making sure it works and displays correctly. First things first, in this primary window here, let's not worry about the window to the left just for the second, but on this primary window here, we've got this hide on startup box. Now, we should know that when we click this box, the next time we open up this application, that this box should probably not be shown on startup. So a single test that we'd like to do is click that box, close the application, and if we just open up the UltraLeap widgets again, we should see our box open. The first thing to notice about all of these icons is that when you hover over them, the icon will grow and shrink as you enter and exit the icon. That's something that a nice UI change um, that's been implemented and the designers probably would have told you about. It's a really nice kind of user experience. It's, it, add, it adds a bit more kind of feedback to the user, just letting them know what they have about to select or that maybe something is actually clickable. So moving to the pointer, we can see then if we hover over as well, that in the box, we've got an animation on the right hand side. Now this shows you that the various kind of animations and stuff that you can do with this widget. And it says pointer, this is the pointer widget. Cursor control with your hand, pinch to select, pinch and slide vertically to scroll, pinch and slide left to go back. Let's give it a go. Um, and the first, two, the first things that should happen on this is that when we click the pointer widget, we should note that two things happen. First is that the green icon above the pointer is displayed, telling us that the pointer widget has been activated just some nice feedback for the user. The second thing is obviously we, we now have this pointer box that is opened up at the side here. Using the logic of what I explained earlier with how the camera below the webcam uh, works, if I hold out my hand you'll be able to see now that when I am moving my hand um, here I'm also controlling the cursor. Um, I promise you that is uh, not my other hand on the mouse. Um, that is just that is just this hand in front of me that is being picked up by the camera um, and being relayed so I can now control my mouse. Now a few things that we'd want to be able to test with this as far as um, testing goes with the application is maybe being able to open something like a, another application. Now it's, if we remember it said on the animation that we should be able to click by pinching so if I hold out my hand and I go over to Chrome and just pinch, then you can see as I double click, just like I would with my mouse, this is now opened up 
Google Chrome. And I just want to hold my other hand here just to show you guys that this really is not me <laughs> moving my mouse. Um, this is the camera sensing my hand and responding accordingly. Um, so you can see there also another good test is just to like, can you click? Is it usable for the user? Are they able to navigate using this? Maybe like a usability thing there to think about for users who might not be able to control movement as well in their hands. And this is a very simple application, guys. So it kind of just, it kind of just, uh, is testing out that these widgets can work. Obviously, that we'll go into other applications in the future that maybe have a bit more complex um, UI stuff to work out. The next thing that I'd like to move on to now is that we can perhaps close this box here with it activated. Does something happen if we've got this activated and we try and close the actual application, close the widget? at the same time that we're using it. I'm not sure what order of events, how exactly that happens, so let's go ahead and find out. This is, again, like testing to make sure our application is robust, that a user can't just do that. So there we go, that was actually a really nice exit. You saw there how I just clicked the close button and my mouse has stayed exactly where it is, and now obviously, me trying to move my hand now no longer works. So back to me using the real mouse now. Let's go to the one above it, laser pointer. Again, as we enter and exit, the icon grows. Point at the screen to see a pointer over your applications. I'm thinking this might be quite useful if you had, say, a PowerPoint presentation or something and you were needing to point to something on screen. So if we go ahead and open this up, again, nice confirmation for the green circle we need to kind of like make sure that that happens on every application uh, just for consistency and we got it and again we've got our nice laser pointer box here as you can probably see already there's a nice sort of red dot that's appeared on screen if i hold out my finger um, it has gone somewhere there it is and we're just doing a single a single finger point here on the screen but now i want to uh, demonstrate some real world kind of like testing scenarios that i think would be applicable here as a tester you've got to be constantly thinking like how could this application break how could users use it what endurance and usability level of usability um, can this application take? Now, you can see that we've still got the laser pointer focused and it's still open, but what happens if we open, what happens if we open, I don't know, another widget with it? D does it work? Can two widgets run at the same time? Let's try one of these ones at the top here, pat to play. Let's just open it up, see what it does. Okay, so it appears that two of these widgets, at least these two, can work together. They seem to have opened fine. The program doesn't seem to have crashed. We're not getting any warning errors pop up. So we'll just close that for a sec. But what about another application? Maybe the laser pointer might not work with something like the pointer widget. Let's try opening the pointer widget. So again, okay. So we've got two green boxes and it looks good. We've got two sort of mini application windows that have both opened up. Now, what happens if I try and activate it? So I've moved my hand into the frame so the camera can see me. So there we go. So the mouse is, the mouse is working. And, oh, okay. So you can kind of see we've got something going on here. Something that's sort of working. You know, they're both responding absolutely fine. What happens if I now flick to the pointed finger that we were using for the laser pointer? Okay, well now you can see that, well, actually it looks like I can operate the laser pointer independently almost, or at least with a bit more freedom in movement to the pointer widget. So yeah, it's important to notice things like this, essentially, um, when you're looking at these types of applications. As this video was the first video of one of many more to come, you know, we didn't even really do any structured software testing here. This was a type of testing we've done here in this video called exploratory testing. This is where the software tester will just go, maybe do a bunch of smoke screen tests just to make sure that the basic functionality works within the application or the UI. There'll be many more videos to come, so please stick around and we're going to be actually delving into some of the software that I use uh, in my day-to-day -day work for kind of management and defect management essentially of bugs and issues and a bit more of a structured way of how to manage tests that pass and tests that fail um, and ha just have somewhere to log it so you can refer back to it so thank you very much for joining me on one of the, my videos if you haven't subscribed please do and for those of you again who have recently subscribed thank you so much it means the world to me um, <laughs> with all of my 80 subscribers um, I mean genuinely every single one of you thank you very very much um, I really do appreciate it 
and hopefully uh, with these series of videos that will be coming out I'll be able to show you a bit more of a practical guide to software testing because so far recently I've just been doing uh, sort of theoretical knowledge that you need to know and those videos will also still be coming through but I also feel it's really really good to get some practical understanding of how to do um, some software testing. We'll be looking on to some more intermediate testing as well stuff like automation will also be coming up um, so please stick around if you haven't subscribed please do and please give the video a like if this is the kind of content you're looking for. I really appreciate every single one of you and I hope to see you in the next video to give you guys some more tools and techniques into the world of software testing. Now from wherever you are, thank you so much for watching, have a nice rest of your day and I'll see you in the next video.